beginning, God created the heavens and the earth and all that was good. All that was good upon the earth. The forests, the mountains that were brought forth, the trees yielding their fruit, the grass that clothed the ground, the waving fields of grain, the music of the little streams on every side, the flow of the mighty rivers, and these that bound the shores. And God created everything that moved beneath the waters, everything that moved upon the land and in the air. And in all these things, God was pleased. God was pleased, for here was a fitting place for his most beloved creation, man. To man, God gave control over all his creation, gave all his wonders to man to care for and enjoy to use with free will, to build with intelligence. To live not only in the image of God, but also in the spirit of God. And for a while, man did live in the spirit of God. Man loved and understood God, and with this understanding and love, man found peace. Peace within himself, and peace with his neighbor, and God saw that this was good. But not for long. For soon man took God and all the wonders of God for granted, and what you take for granted, you soon ignore. So it was with man. Man ignored God and turned from his way. And deep within man's heart, a war was built between himself and his creator. This war was like a real wall separating man from God. Like a wall built of ponderous stones, one stone laid upon another, growing higher and higher and higher until man had completely closed out the light of God, and man was in the shadows. Here in the shadows, man was fearful. In the shadows of his own making, man found no peace. No peace within himself, no peace with his neighbor. For if a man turns away from God and will not love God, then he cannot love his neighbor. And where there is no love, there can be only fear. In fear, man builds new walls, walls of hatred, walls of envy, walls of distrust, intolerance, and greed. Man builds all kinds of walls against only one kind of love. Without that love, and with the walls built in his heart, man is fearful and afraid and hides his weakness in the domination of his fellow men, enslaving and exploiting those weaker than himself. Throughout man's history, crafty leaders, themselves fearful and afraid, have played upon this weakness. We have ever been willing to listen, to follow, yes, and even to worship these leaders. Even some of us in the church, Hiding behind pious masks have at times led men far from the way of peace. Man has stumbled on in fear and trembling, carrying high the banners of selfishness and hypocrisy, shouting and demanding the way of peace. But the peace only God can give, man himself has shut out of his heart. Is it any wonder that man in the shadows cannot find the way of peace? For to have the way of peace, man must have a changed heart, a heart that is not filled with fear and hatred.
Some 2,000 years ago, at a low point in man's despair, God, knowing that his children would perish in the darkness, sent as an expression of his love the light of the world in his own son. Multitudes went to see and hear him. Little children were drawn to him. The laboring man, the poor man and the rich, the teacher and the doctor, the soldier and the statesman, the outcasts and the despised, the sick and the dying, they all came to see and hear him. His message was for everyone, regardless of race, creed or color. His message was the way of peace. He said it very simply. He told us how to remove the walls within our hearts. And his words were, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. man, even though man in his blindness rejected him. Some that had come to see and hear him stayed to follow him, to carry the word, to tell that here was the way of peace for all nations. But they were too few, and there was no peace. We have seen it in our own time. We have continued to reject him. We have continued to build the walls and live in darkness. We have continued to turn against our neighbor. Race is pitted against race, creed against creed, color against color, nation against nation. But the end is in sight. Yes, the end may come sooner than we think, for this is the atomic age. That in itself is no cause for fear. The atomic age gives promise of undreamed benefits to man. No, the only thing we have to change in this new age is man himself.
Man now has control of forces with the potential power to destroy himself and all the wonders that God created. Man has harnessed the power and the energy of the atom for destruction. Time is short to follow in his steps. The time is short to walk the way of peace. This will could be the last hour for decision. For it is quite possible that one day the end result of our hatreds, greeds, envy, selfishness, intolerance, and distrust will be...
is possible one day. What day? Only you can decide this day. And only you can keep this day from coming.